Hey guys, welcome to the United 12 YouTube channel. My name is Samuel Perez. Thank you for watching. Today's video, I'm actually gonna be addressing a question that I received online from my last video. So the question, I'm gonna read it first and then I'm gonna answer it for you guys. So it says, hi Samuel, how are you? I've been watching your videos, but I still have a question. If you could take the time to address it, I would really appreciate it. I'm still struggling to hold a grasp of why is homosexuality wrong? I mean, if you love somebody and are faithful to that person, why would you be sentenced to hell? I understand the wrongness when you, let's say, kill somebody, gossip, etc., because these are sins that ultimately cause harm to people's lives. People get hurt, etc. But when it comes to homosexual, not the promiscuous lifestyle, but the one loving one another and being faithful, I cannot come to an answer and why it is so wrong. So um, let me just start by saying, guys, this video is addressed to um, people who have Christian faith. If you do not have a Christian faith, you're welcome to watch this video, but maybe a lot of what I'm saying won't really resonate with you very well because I will be talking about the Bible. Um, all right, so first and foremost, my name is Samuel. I have an attraction towards men, so I'm not a regular Christian. I have lived uh, through a homosexual lifestyle, and luckily the Lord saved me out of there, and now I don't identify as a homosexual man, but I identify as a child of Christ. So, um, for those of you who are watching this and don't believe I should be talking about it, I have lived it, and I have the personal right to talk about my life and about how I feel now. Um, I lived that life for a very long time, and I love that life. I have nothing but love um, for, for that aspect of my life. I'm actually really glad that I went through it because it taught me to become a better, stronger person and it taught me to have more faith in God and his goodness. Um, I was a stripper and I was a sex addict, so I was not homophobic at all. I loved being a stripper. <laughs> I had a lot of fun being a stripper and I loved having sex. I was a sinner completely, first and foremost. Um, um, one thing I also want to notice is that I do not hate gay people. I love trans people, I love drag queens, and I love regular gay people. I love them as if um, they were my brothers and my sisters, and I do not have a problem with them at all. I'm not homophobic. They were honestly some of the nicest people that I've ever met. Um, gay people were the people who welcomed me when nobody wanted to welcome me. Um, so they did um, have a, a very amazing impact on my life. Um, however, though, I do have to say this, I reached a critical point in my life where I was suicidal and could not find happiness in that world and in that lifestyle because I believe because of the sin. And that's when Jesus did a miracle in my life and made me fall in love with him, resulting in my happiness. Um, so I do have notes that I've taken just because I really wanna make sure this comes out in the right way. So let's get started fast. So as a Christian, what is the first and foremost thing that we do when we need to know what is right and what is wrong? We go to the Bible. So Christians believe in the Bible, right? I personally believe in the Bible because I have found all the proof that I need to know that it, it is a divinely inspired book, not just written by men, but also written by God um, that literally nobody could have put together without the help of God. So pretty much all of our morality and the things that we think are morally good in this world, um, even if you don't know the Bible, it's in there like basically our even our government in america is founded on biblical principles um and a lot of those principles are just like selflessness patience kindness so if you think that the bible is a hateful book or just a, a book that condemns people it's actually a book that teaches people how to love one another very strongly so um what does the bible say about homosexuality so in genesis 19 with sodom and gomorrah this is a, a, I just listed a couple of places where um, homosexuality is mentioned. Genesis 19. Um, this is one of those stories that has just been blown out of proportion, guys, and it is just ridiculous sometimes. Um, Sodom and Gomorrah was not destroyed because of homosexuality. It was destroyed because it was a sinful city in everything. <laughs> so we, um, in the city, there was this guy named Lot, right? And he was living there, and there were some angels who, um, who had to get him out of the city. When the angels came to the city, um, they were so beautiful and so attractive that the men in the city wanted to rape the angels. So this is the first um, kind of mention of homosexuality in the Bible, and it's, it's in Genesis. For the, the reasoning behind why it was wrong, it was because it was lust and sexual desire. 
Um, so whenever, you know, something really interesting is that whenever we see homosexuality in the Bible, it's always in a bad place. And I wonder why that is. <laughs> if you see something in the Bible and every time you see it, it's in a bad place, maybe it's because it's a bad thing, guys. Many people will say that this doesn't mean that you can't have a loving, monogamous relationship with a man, and that's true. That's not what the verse is about, but remember that God in the Bible created Adam and he created Eve and united them in marriage. So this is the foundation of when all things were good, there was no sin in the world, there was a one woman and one man and they were together. One thing to notice is that we do see marriage happen in a variety of other different ways in the Bible. Um, intercultural marriage, we see um, even marriage between a, a, a priest and a prostitute. So we see marriage in many different ways, but the, only, the always sure way we always see marriage is between a woman and a man. There is absolutely no mention of a loving monogamous relationship in the Bible between two men or two women or anything like that anywhere in the Bible. It's nowhere to be found. So if God wanted us to know that it was okay, maybe he would have mentioned in the Bible. Maybe he would have, you know, showed an example of that, even if they weren't a main character in a story or something. Like, <laughs> he probably would have put that in there if he thought that that was what we should strive for. So another place also where it says in the Bible where um, it talks about homosexuality is Leviticus 18 and 20. It says, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. And that's Leviticus 18, 22. And if a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. That's Leviticus 20. So now this was given to the Jewish people when they escaped Egypt, which historically can be proven for those of you who doubt the Bible. Um, they need rules because they didn't know what they should do and what they shouldn't do. Um, this was one of those rules. So they were given laws and they had to follow these laws. And the person that gave them these laws were Moses and Moses had a special covenant with God. However, as Christians, we don't follow this law anymore. That's Judaism. So those are, uh, that's from the Jewish faith. Um, Jesus came to fulfill it and he did it entirely perfect and then started a new covenant with us um, where he talked about some of the new things that we got to do. And then he gave us two new commandments, which was to love God and to love one another. But once again, we see another place where homosexuality is mentioned and it's not in a good way. It's, it's put in a bad way. Once again, God tells people, you know, don't sleep with another man as you would with a woman. Um, and a lot of people try to twist this verse around and try to make it seem as though it's only talking about cheating on your wife for a man. But I don't believe that that is the case, but you can have your own interpretation of that. Also, another thing that I noticed is that it says the blood is upon them, which means that God is not really to blame for this. So remember, we don't kill people anymore. Like we don't stone people anymore. Uh, Christianity is all about loving people and forgiving people and giving people chances. Um, but back in those days, it was a very different time. They lived in a very different place culturally than we do. Um, so there's a lot of different rules. So it does say that the, the so it does say that their blood is upon them, which means God is not really to blame for this. Their actions are their own actions. And it's not the homosexual thought or even the attraction that is wrong. So a lot of people are like, oh, well, I have these thoughts. There's nothing I can do about it. This is just my attraction. It's not the thoughts. It's, it's what you do with those thoughts. It's the actions of them. And it says, if you do something wrong, then you have to, there's a price that you have to pay for doing that. So I believe that if you have gay sex in your life, or if you're in a monogamous relationship with another man, anything outside of the sanctity of a marriage between a woman and a man, then um, there will be consequences to that. Um, and that is not from God. God is good and God forgives and he's patient. But that is you open up the door to evil because according to God, homosexuality is bad. So when we do bad things, we open up the door to other bad things to come into our lives. So we, we pay the price for that. It's not God punishing you. God doesn't hate you because you're gay. It's none of that. It's just that sin has its consequences. So three, uh, the third place where I found that it was mentioned is in Romans chapter one, uh, verse 26 through 27. It says, for this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. 
men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. So when we think natural, we think Adam and Eve and we think the way that they were created um, before sin. Our natural perfect relationship to look at is between a woman and a man, but in this world where it's filled with sin and we're in our fallen nature, um, which is the fall of Adam and Eve, it's not really our fault, it's Adam and Eve, but you know, it's our fault because we're human. So what Paul is saying is in this verse is that when we go without God, we reject him. And what is good um, and what is natural becomes the unnatural and it becomes bad. So God is good. So everything from God is good, but everything outside of God is bad. So he's basically saying that as a result of rejecting God, homosexuality can come into the picture and you can start to develop unnatural desires for the same sex. Um, basically, the Bible is telling us that homosexuality is once again unnatural. All right, so now that we've covered the Bible, let's talk about why do I think that homosexuality is wrong. Um, basically, in my life, I just knew that um, something didn't feel right. I always felt shame and guilt, uh, no matter how much I tried to run from it. Um, I always had a feeling that it was like lingering. It was, I knew there was no good in what I was doing. I also thought that I could fall in love and have a monogamous relationship and that God would be okay with that. But every time I try to find a good guy, I would find that they didn't exactly have the best morals. Um, even when they claimed to be Christian, which was the craziest part. Um, every time I dated a guy, it always ended up horribly. They would cheat on me, um, they would lie a lot, or um, they would have you know problems with drugs or whatever the case may be. What I observed in that world was pretty ugly too. You know, men claiming that they were in love, but they were sleeping with other men, um, inviting other people into their bedroom. There was this thing called uh, a trouble, which was like a, a three people in a relationship. Um, basically, when two guys got tired of each other, they would invite another person into their relationship and then call that love. Um, so when we don't have a foundation on what love looks like and, and what is a, a good relationship, then um, we're basically open to whatever. Like love can look like anything and a relationship can look like anything. So there also what I saw was there was a lot of heavy drug use in that world, um, whether it was a party lifestyle or even just someone who was a lone wolf kind of situation with marijuana. Um, it seemed like no amount of relationship or drugs could satisfy their hearts. I don't believe that that is a gay problem. I believe that that is a universal problem and that even heterosexuals have to deal with this is that if you don't fill up your heart with God, you're gonna to wanna to start filling it up with something else. So it's not that homosexuality is this big topic issue. It's something that is the worst sin in the world. It's really not. Um, a sin is a sin and heterosexual uh, having sex outside of marriage is also just as bad as homosexuality, you know? So my relationships and the horrific experiences that I experienced with men were a red flag. And the relationships of others that I saw in that world were another red flag. That is why I believe that you couldn't be gay and be Christian and be okay. Um, because to be gay would be to be in disobedience to what God says is right and what he likes and what you know he dislikes. You can't be a fresh running river and also be a salty sea river at the same time. Like it doesn't work like that. You have to pick one. They're mutually exclusive. Even the Bible says this. It says in James chapter three, verse 11, can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olive or a grapevine bear fruits? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So no matter how much I wanted to have a gay relationship and be close to God, when I had gay sex, when I was living that homosexual lifestyle, um, it was pulling me farther away from God. So as much as I tried to get closer to God, I wasn't able to because sin was in the middle. And, what, and remember, what is sin? Sin is just separation from God. So when we sin, we are separated from God. And that's why I believe that you can't be gay and be Christian and have a loving monogamous relationship at the same time. So what do I do now? This is probably you're like, okay, well, I have understood this video. Maybe now uh, this is a little bit more clearer. I have a better understanding. What do I do now? Guys, this, this, this is just your personal relationship with Jesus. You gotta pray, and I have some steps that I have here that I can walk you through, but really it's gonna come down to you and your own relationship with God. I would say give everything to Jesus, and he will give 
He will give you strength to be able to overcome all the things that you need to overcome. The thoughts, the sex, the world, everything that was happening in your life. But just like in an AA meeting, the first step is to realize that you have a problem. So first go to God and say, God, I have a problem with homosexuality. I don't feel like this is right. Um, please help me to deal with this. And I give this problem up to you. And I surrender my life to you. I give you my everything. Tell God that you want him to be your everything. Start a real relationship with him. And like I always say, don't chew for heterosexuality. If you're watching this video and it's you think I'm trying to convince you to become heterosexual, that's not what I'm trying to do at all. Don't do this because you want to become heterosexual. I mean, maybe you do and that's wonderful and that's great. But however, the goal for me and, and the goal for you is to fall in love completely head over heels for Jesus and have him be the only reason why you're doing this. And just remember that he is still the miracle worker and he works miracles every single day. And what you think is impossible is nothing for God. So um, he changed my life and I'm living proof of that. And um, if you have any questions or any concerns or something completely different off this topic or whatever the case may be, just go ahead and put your questions down below. I will make more videos to answer the questions that you guys have in a very kind, loving way. Um, and just know that I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. I respect whatever decision you make and I'm very grateful that you listened to this video. Um, please go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you like the video. Um, give it a thumbs up as well. And um, yeah, help to donate to my ministry if you have the chance, united12.com. All the information is going to be down below. I love you guys. Have a great day. Bye.